Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host with a beard and today I'm reviewing the all new 2022 BMW 2 Series Active Tourer. So without further ado, let's jump right into the review. Check it out. So here we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the 2022 BMW 2 Series Active Tourer. Let me start off by showing you guys the new key design. Um, I do like it. It's kind of light in the hand, not too heavy. And we have all the familiar lock, unlock and the trunk buttons right here. And now moving to the car, it has a better design than the outgoing model because that one was a bit more boxy, whereas this one is more rounded off at the front and on the back, which gives it a more modern and up-to-date design. This particular car has been equipped with BMW's LED lights. Let me unlock the car to show you guys. So these are the daytime running lights and these two are the LEDs. Definitely an improvement comparing to the older model. We have a new grille, which is a bit bigger and we have the front facing camera right here. A new bumper design with active side vents here and here. And it's a nice color. I don't exactly know what it's called. I'm gonna put it in the video after I look it up uh, in a bit. But it does sparkle kind of in the sun. And I'm sorry for that because this car is equipped with uh, keyless entry. And every time I get closer to the car, it gets unlocked. So we have a nice design here on the uh, side view mirrors with the integrated LEDs right here. And also an integrated camera for the 360 degree top-down view. We have a new design for the um, door handles and kind of a high vehicle which gives you lots of headroom which I will show you guys in a bit. And this is the petrol version so this is a 218i so not a hybrid which will also come. And here we see a brand new rear light design. These are also fully LED as you guys can see right here and let me unlock it so you guys can see it lighting up. Very nice, very modern looking and for the first time in a combustion engine BMW I don't see any exhaust pipes here. <laughs> Uh, there's going to be a lot of things uh, in this car or a few things that are going to surprise you guys uh, that are not going to be BMW like, especially in the interior. So bear with me. Uh, what I do like is this spoiler right here, which gives the car a more muscular look from behind. And this specific car has been equipped with 16 inch rims just for practicality and comfort reasons. Because this car is all about practicality, let me show you guys the boot space. Fully electrically opening through the key. And we see a decently large and pretty high going boot space right here. You can also remove this parcel shelf right here and recline these seats. Beware, they cannot be reclined through the uh, trunk space, which is kind of annoying. So you got to go all the way to the front here and then pull this lever here and then the seat shoots forward. So you can do it with these seats as well. These are 40, 40, 20. And when we recline all these seats, we see a decently large boot space. Another neat feature is, and this is only in the combustion variants of this car, is that, let me fully recline the seat, um, is that you have a lever here and then you can pull these seats forward as to provide more boot space as you guys can see right here you can do the same with this car so stepping into the interior of the new 2 series active tour we see a brand new design that we are not used to from a bmw looking at these doors very nice leather wrapped doors with some kind of wooden trim and you have ambient dialing running on the doors all throughout the dashboard i don't know if you guys can see it because it's a very sunny day out but i think you guys get the idea a little bit we have a nice and beautiful door handle design and you have the lock and unlock buttons here and then your various buttons for your windows and your mirror controls also the armrest is wrapped in leather which is very nice and down here we have some cheap and scratchy plastics but i think this is an issue shared throughout its uh, competitors as well 
right here also some cheap plastic all right right in front of us we have a new bmw style steering wheel which is beautiful it's nice and thick it sits well in your hands and i do like the design of it right behind that we have the all new bmw idrive system 8 so these are dual screens now which we've only seen in two other cars before which is the bmw i4 and the ix if you haven't seen those reviews i will link them down below so go and check them out but the difference with those two cars and this car is that the idrive system in this car is only controlled through touch and not through swivel wheel so when we look at the middle console i'm sorry um bmw needs to shut up thank you so when we look at the middle console here we don't see a swivel wheel anymore we just have a volume button a modes button which are kind of the themes of the car and some other buttons there are there is no gear lever anymore so just this button that you can move back and forth to put it in reverse drive or neutral and the park button and this is your engine start stop button going back to the infotainment screen we see a very crisp and clear screen very responsive to the touch as you guys can see right here it's a very large as well let me go let me show you guys the navigation system as you guys can see a very responsive very clear and crisp this navigation system also comes with a augmented reality feature which i will show you guys when i'm doing the driving review as i mentioned before this car has been equipped with the 360 degree top down view camera as you guys can see right here very clear very crisp graphics and as you guys can see here you have a different modes through which you can choose to look at your car and a nice feature is, a nice feature is when you are looking at this side and then you suddenly want to move to this side it's like a drone flying over the car and positioning him on the other side here you can see the reverse lights have been turned on and let's fly over the car again and if you turn the wheels obviously you can see it very nice a very crisp and very clear graphics for the rest it's bmw as usual you have your radio and your music controls right here your radio stations if you go back then you can also position these tiles the way you want it so just hold it if you want your phone to be the second tile here uh, if you want your radio to be the fourth tile right here then you can just move them around nice customization i do like it Right in front of you, we have a fully digital gauge cluster as well as part of these dual screens. You can change out the layout of this screen uh, a little bit. Let me show you guys. Uh, not a huge type of customization. This car doesn't have a Sport Comfort or Eco Pro mode. It's uh, just a two, uh, 1.5 liter petrol engine, so nothing too exciting. But you have a slight amount of a um, customization right here also comes equipped with a heads-up display which is not projected on the window but on this piece of plastic that retracts when you turn on the car i accidentally turned on the vipers i'm sorry for that so let me see if the camera will focus on it um it's not quite focusing there we go so you can also choose a customization for the heads-up display it's only these two uh, screens that you can pick from i kind of like this one um nothing too exciting but still it's very much visible with a sunglasses on you know because uh i do have the problem in my cars that when i am looking at the heads of display with my sunglasses on i am not seeing them very clearly all right moving to the dashboard we see a nice wooden trim that continues on the doors here as well a very nice air vent design i must say very futuristic very nice looking and very firm feeling as well with some aluminium trim on it and the ambient lighting that i showed you guys before one other thing i want to show you guys and what i don't like is that the climate controls are not physical anymore so that's the only way you can uh, control the climate uh, of this car and the air vents of this car is through this screen okay they are directly there so you don't have to go through uh, large amounts of menus to search where they exactly are but still i would have liked some physical buttons as well but hey this is what you get moving further down we see a large storage space right here this can be optioned out as a wireless charging port for your phone this car doesn't have it 
two cup holders right here and then the new middle console design from bmw which also came back in the bmw ix this is how you open up this part right here you have a small storage space uh, over here and then a large storage space right here and right here with two USB-C sockets. The door bins in the 2 Series Active Tourer are decently large. You have some decent space right here and a separate compartment for your bottle, which I love. Same on the other side. The seats in this car are very nice, actually. These are not even the upgraded seats. These are completely manual seats. Uh, but these are very nicely padded, very nicely uh, covered in perforated leather, as you guys can see here. Soft. They provide enough support for your back right here. You can even retract this part right here to add some more thigh support. And now let's check out the space in the back seats of the 2 Series Active Tourer. Very easy access. And wow, look at the amount of knee room I have. The seat has been set into my driver's position. I am about 5'10", 5'11", and I have plenty of knee room, as you guys can see right here. Let me show you guys how much headroom. So right here, you guys can see I have this amount of headroom left and this amount even with the cutout of this open roof right here or this panoramic roof and people over six foot are going to be just fine here for longer journeys moving to the middle seat right here oh okay um there's a small tunnel right here not too high but you do have to put your feet right next to them and the seat right here is pretty hard to sit on and also the backrest is pretty hard so um, adults won't be too comfortable here for longer journeys but you do have a nice view right in front of you and uh, kids or smaller adults are going to be just fine here we also have some netting in both seats and a decent amount of space or storage in the door bins in the rear also these doors are wrapped with leather here on the door handles and the door flanks itself all right and now let's see how the bmw 2 series active tourer drives and behaves on the road unlike any other bmw this car has to be started very differently so the engine start stop button is right here and the gear lever is actually this little nudge right here which you have to retract to put in drive and then we are off all right i've been driving around with this car for some time now and the first thing that i noticed the first two things that i noticed are <coughs> the suspension in this car isn't as smooth or comfortable as i would expect from a car in this class to be don't get me wrong it's not uncomfortable at all it does soak up the bumps decently well but it is a bit harder than i would expect from a car of this class second thing is the steering wheel the steering wheel is surprisingly surprisingly responsive because look at this you have immediate feedback on the steering wheel when you're turning it i mean after all it's a bmw you do have to expect some type of sportiness from these cars but it's nothing too intrusive it's not annoying or anything um, you can have a little bit of fun with this car you have a nice visibility right in front of you, nice large windscreen, nice large windows to your side, a big window in the rear, which is not too sloped, so you have a nice visibility. Although you have a small blind spot right there, which isn't too bad, you can work around it. The main annoying point of this car, uh, visibility-wise, is this A-pillar. Because of this shape of this car, the A-pillar is sloped uh, quite a bit forward which can be very tricky when you're pulling out of junctions because you have to put your head to the left or the right and you know search uh, kind of for cars that are coming from the other side which can be a bit tricky as I mentioned before this is the 218i specification of the 2 series active tourer which means that this car has a 1.5 liter petrol engine with about 136 PS and 230 Newton meters of torque. All right, I'm on a straight road now and let me floor the throttle. Ooh, wow. 
it does have a decent amount of uh, pulling power and nothing too exciting or anything but I would suggest you would go for the higher uh, models like one of the hybrid models there are two hybrid models coming out uh, or one of the more powerful petrol variants of uh, this car because they will pack a bit more punch and it's going to be more practical when you're going to visit family or on trips with three kids in the back with your partner and the trunk full of luggage tech wise this car has everything you would ever possibly need it has nice dual screen right in front of you very crisp very clear images very responsive touchscreen right here the pistol or resistance in this new iDrive system is uh, the new augmented reality system that they've impl implemented in this car which has come out in other brands as well before but it's also really crisp really nice to use in the iDrive 8 system so when you type your address in the navigation bar and you're nearing a turn or a roundabout or, or, or a light or something like that, it projects in real time using the front camera. Uh, you see the street in front of you right here on the screen and it projects like these 3D images of arrows uh, that are getting larger as you're nearing the turn, which is very handy. Maneuvering around town as I am doing right now is very easy in this car. It's not too large. It's a bit high up car. It's a kind of a bit bulky but it doesn't feel bulky it's a light car and it's very easy to maneuver around town and if you still have issues of parking the car or something like that you can use the self park function of the car or you can use the 360 degree top down cameras that come equipped with this car so you will never scratch your rims or the side fenders all right sound deadening in the 2 series active tourer is okay at best it's not on the level of a 5 series or a 7 series or something like that those are a completely different price category and a class of cars but it's not intrusive you do hear a small amount of tire noise when the engine is cold you can definitely hear the engine because it's a 1.5 liter engine three cylinder it's a small engine you can hear it when it's cold when it warms up the sound goes away a little bit but still there is a faint engine sound coming through into the cabin I don't hear any wind noise coming from these mirrors which is very nice I would have expected because these mirrors aren't the smallest either they're not super large but they are the smallest and because of the shape of these mirrors I thought that it would provide a lot of um, the wind noise but apparently not which is a nice thing so what are my final impressions about the 2022 BMW 2 Series Active Tourer? Well, first of all, it's definitely a step up uh, from the previous version, which was, which was very boring, uh, bland looking, and both looks-wise as tech-wise, interior and exterior. The looks uh, on the outside of this car, nothing too exciting or anything uh, like that, but this car does look decently beautiful. Uh, inside, the tech is light years ahead from the previous version especially with this new iDrive 8 system and the touch screen you do have to get used to the fact that you don't have a swivel wheel anymore and it's all operated through this touch screen which was not the case in the i4 and the ix might i add so i don't know why they did it in this car and it's not going to be the case in the new bmw uh, 7 series or the i7 that are coming out either because that one does have a swivel wheel as well but anyways i digress the car is roomy enough for you for your passenger for the passengers back there you can sit three people comfortably there two adults even large adults you have a large amount of bar, uh, boot space and this car will transport you on longer journeys in all the ease and all the comfort that you want and if you're a tech freak you have plenty of gadgets to keep you busy Anyways, guys, this was it for today. Thanks again for tuning in. Stay tuned because I have plenty of more reviews coming out. Until next time and drive safe.